Hi, my name is Barnaby and I'm a guitar maker and repairer and I work here in Tachikawa, which is near Tokyo in Japan. Um, but I have a day job. I work as an academic and my university is sending me to London uh, for this coming academic year. So from April I'm going to be in London for a year. And what that means is that I won't be doing any guitar making, but I will do some playing um, and I'd like to take an instrument with me. Now, I want to take one of my own guitars, but I want a guitar which has a bolt-on neck so I can take it apart for easy carrying. And um, the only guitar I have which has a bolt-on neck is this one, my Workshop Telecaster. The thing is, um, I'm tremendously attached to it. I really have a lot of sentimental um, attachment to this guitar and uh, I really love it. And I don't really want to take it to London where I may possibly leave it, um, depending on how much luggage I have and what my life is like over there. So I thought, well, why don't I just kind of knock together a quick guitar to take with me? So. I'm leaving in two months, or just over two months, and I thought, what can I make in that time? There has to have a bolt-on neck, probably a Telecaster is good, but I'd like something a bit meatier in the neck than a standard Telecaster pickup, um, so a P90 or a humbucker would be good. Um, fairly light, because I'll be taking it on the plane, um, but not... Um, with an F-hole or anything, so I don't want a thin-line Telecaster. And so thinking about these things, oh, and the other thing I thought was I can only make it out of parts that are around the workshop, so not buy anything new for it. And of course, because I'm going in such a short time, and also because I hate painting guitars, um, I'll use oil for the finish. So with those things in mind, I looked through and this is what I found. I've got this random chunk of what is, I think, African mahogany. This can be our neck. It's a pretty cool piece. Um, I've got this uh, board, which is, I think, a piece of African ebony, um, and this can be a really nice fingerboard. And this will be the body, and this is a piece of Spanish cedar, but I will chamber it. I'm not going to have extensive sound chambers. I'm going to put in relief holes rather than sound chambers because I want it to be light, but I don't want it to have tons and tons of extra resonance because I'll be playing it at night in an apartment and I don't want people complaining. Um, and then over the top of it I'm going to put this. This is Koa and this Koa comes from a house. Um, one of my neighbours here in the workshop was taking apart a house, pulling up floorboards and counters and things and took up all of these huge chunks of Koa wood and he gave them to me. He said, you know, can you do anything with them? And I said, oh, Koa is an amazing wood. Now they're in inconvenient sizes, they're not perfect for acoustic guitars or anything, but um, I thought that I might try turning this into a drop top which can cover up my um, relief holes and maybe look kind of cool on the top of the guitar. Um, apart from that, I've got things like this shallow bridge that I got for a project and I wound up using a different bridge, so this has been sitting around the workshop. Um, these random P90s, uh, which I think came, someone brought in one day and I actually wound them some different P90s, um, but these have just been sitting here so I could use these. Um, you know, and other stuff like uh, truss rod again from another project that didn't get used. So this will be a guitar of odds and ends and leftovers. So let's start with making our drop top. Um, I'm going to run this board through the bands, uh, through the bands. Oh, okay. So let's start with making our drop top. I'm going to run this core board through the bandsaw like this. Um, what I've got here is attached a block so that my hand is a long way away and I'll be using this as a pusher so that at no point does my um, hand, or do either of my hands, come anywhere near the band's or blade? I'm also wearing safety glasses and all the rest. Okay. Hold it up to the light.
a Swiss cheese guitar, that's basically all I want. I don't want to connect them up because what I don't want are large internal resonating chambers. These are purely for weight relief. And remember, there's a top going over this. And because the top is very thin, um, it would act like a soundboard if there were chambers underneath, even though there's no sound hole. Um, and I don't really want that resonance. I just want the weight relief. Okay, so time to put in um, these channels. And here we are, holes and channel, all done, just waiting for its top. So here we are, pretty well every clamp I have to hand is now on the top holding it down and this will sit until the next time I manage to come to the workshop, at which point the clamps will come off um, and we'll see what we have. So here's the body, it's out of the clamps. Um, the back is scratched up from the clamping, but that doesn't matter because it's 55 millimeters thick. It has to be 45 millimeters thick, so I'm going to be taking an entire centimeter off the back of this. Right, now it's time to route the channel for the truss rod. And what I do is I've got my router set up, uh, or trimmer, I should say, and the line is here, I've got a guide here, and I simply go along. Now, with some chiseling, you can see there's a nice tight fit for that truss rod in there. And on with our board. Now the binding is a simple job, it's really just done with super glue. You can use different things but I find super glue is perfectly acceptable. Now you can use rope to hold the binding in place while it dries, uh, it doesn't really take very long. So here's our body, the binding is installed and um, the body needs to be thinned, there's a bit of cleaning up and some routing but it's really very close to being done. I'm very impressed with the way this plank looks. And this is our neck, the fingerboard is on. Um, now what I need to do is simply trim this fingerboard, the edge of the fingerboard to the neck itself and um, bring the neck close to finishing, thin it uh, to the appropriate thickness. Once I've done that, I can work out exactly how it's going to fit in here. I always try and do this as a custom fit and uh, we can get this guitar closer and closer to being finished. So here we are. Um, the neck is in place. It's lined up perfectly with the centre line um, and that's looking good to go. I'm actually very happy. Nice tight fit. So now I can move on to the next stage. look now a very quick mock-up we can see this is where the bridge is going to go we've got our neck on and our two pickups in place <laughs> You know what, in every build, there's a moment where what you're making goes from feeling like a lump of wood to a musical instrument. And the moment I pulled it off the table and picked it up, suddenly, in my hands, it felt alive. Look at that, 
beautiful clean cavity. Now the body is really light too. Nice bit of ebony for a rear control cavity. Let's give it a go. This is now routed. That goes in there, I think, just about perfectly. Everyone has their favourite part of a guitar build. Mine is carving the neck. Now we're going to drill in the ferules um, in the back, which is where the neck is going to be attached. What happens is you've got this kind of metal washer thing, and then there'll be a bolt and an insert and that whole assembly will hold the neck on. So there's the ferrule in place and then we just have uh, three more to do. You'll notice that I'm actually got a, an offset angle here because I'm going to be carving away a bit here. So here's our sculpted heel and um, here and here have been sanded to match. I've also taken a little meat out of here. So that means that when I play up the neck, I can um, get my hand in there with you know no difficulty. So now when we check string height, we are exactly where we want to be. One important job with this guitar is shielding and I use shielding paint. This stuff is called Noise Hell, which is honestly a fabulous name. And I simply paint the inside of the cavities and the channels between them. Now, I hate painting guitars. Um, I hate applying lacquer and things, but oil Oil is a very, very different animal. I really enjoy putting it on a guitar and watching it bring the instrument to life. And so I'm using True Oil, which is used for guns. And it's really simple to apply. You just put it on your cloth, put it on your wood, and that's it. The more I worked with this wood, the more I came to realize it's actually definitely Honduran um, mahogany and not um, African mahogany as I had originally thought. The grain is very characteristic, the way it carves, the smell, everything else is something I recognize very strongly. Now I'm making base plates for pickups. I've decided that I like this guitar so much that I'm just going to make my own pickups and they're going to be P90s. So I've drilled some holes in some nickel silver and I'm just shaping it to the right uh, dimensions. <laughs> Now it's time for pickup winding. And I'm going to wind two P90 pickups. I'm going to use this um, American wire gauge 42 wire. And once they're done, they're going to go inside these P90 covers, which I have lined with copper foil. Um, one of these gets nine and a half thousand turns. That's a neck pickup and it's wound on this side. And the other one gets 10,000 turns and it's wound on this side. Um, the idea is that having the coils in reverse directions and the magnets in reverse directions means you get uh, hum cancelling properties when your switch is in the middle position. One coil, 7.61. Now what has to happen to these coils is they're going to be potted. So that means they get put in hot wax and cooked for about oh, 15, 20 minutes. Um, and then the pickups get assembled. So here we are, our completed P90 pickups. Uh, this one is the neck, and this one is the bridge. Yay! Well, it's a chilly morning in the workshop, and I've just put the kettle on, um, but it's time for final assembly. 
And if we look here, this is the neck. It looks, wow, fantastic. Um, and the body is here. Now, both of them have been finished with true oil, but what I haven't done is gone for um, a kind of final polishing finish. What I did was I built up layers of true oil. Uh, as they dried, I kind of sanded them into each other a bit to get a little bit of leveling, and then I did a final wash coat, and the final wash coat was just um, a little bit of naphtha and true oil together and that's all I've done I haven't done any final polish at all and that's how I'm going to leave it uh, this guitar is all about the wood I don't want to kind of simulate nitrocellulose or anything the green indicates the neck pickup it's the slightly weaker one Now we should be all wired up and uh, here's a little trick to check that things are working. What you do is you um, plug your pickups into an amp and then you take another guitar, strum the strings and then you see if they are amplified. Perfect. So here's a nice tightly wired uh, cavity and our knobs and everything else in place. These are staggered tuners. If you look down here, you can see that they're set up to eliminate the need for string trees. Now here's the nut blank in place. It's something called a shelf nut. If you have a look there, you can see there's a little shelf. That's actually going to be reduced a bit, but that shelf is something to help intonation in this type of um, guitar. Now we need to rough in the nut slots. Here we are, the moment of truth. So here we are, the guitar is entirely together brand new guitar. Um, I haven't set up intonation yet and I haven't done the frets or anything but it works. That's our neck, oh sorry that's our bridge pickup. The tone rolled off. Cool. Great cap. Okay our middle. And our neck. that neck sound. We roll off the tone. Now I'm doing the fret leveling with something called the katana which is an amazing tool invented by a guy called David Bisoli and it's a really really good way to just get all of the frets level and playing perfectly. So now all of the frets are exactly where we want them to be. Um, we've got no buzz on the guitar. Um, the neck, the truss rod adjustment is fine. So now it's just a case of uh, crowning and polishing the frets, doing the fret ends, um, finishing the nut, and the guitar's done. <laughs> Thank you.